Welcome to today's video, which is actually inspired by you. I read all your comments, many of which seem to focus around milestone birthdays. And there seems to be a lot of anxiety about turning 40 and 50, and somehow we have these preconceived notions that everything's gonna go downhill, and there's nothing to look forward to, and the best days are behind us. And I am here to argue with you that that is so not true. So. In reading this, it, it really spoke to me and it made me come up with a list of the top 10 things that I no longer worry about over 50. And I wanna serve as maybe as inspiration for you to not worry so much about what it is that you're giving credence and credit, what it is that seems to be taking away your focus from making you feel good, be good, look good, because we're so caught up in what it is that we think we're losing. So let me present to you what in fact you are possibly gaining. And topping my list, what I don't worry about now that I'm 50, is number one, and this really is in no, no order, but number one, I kind of think this one is at the top, what other people think. There is something so freeing and liberating about not caring about pleasing others. Now that's not to say that we are not trying to be mindful, thoughtful, and, and give pleasure to those around us and those who are meaningful to us, of course. But we are not placing our self-worth, our value system, on what others think about us. You know, I am in a business where I receive criticism and feedback all the time. I have for as long as I've been in television news, some of it good, some of it not so good. But I learned a while ago not to let the not so good ruffle my feathers and also not to base my value system on the good, that I don't need praise in order to feel good about myself and I don't need negativity to make me feel bad about myself, that I am my compass and I set the course. And when you start doing that and stop giving such validity to other people's criticism, comments uh, in your life, then suddenly you are no longer dictated and guided by others, but accept you, your choices, and pleasing yourself and pleasing the good Lord above. And it is such a simple, pared down way to operate, but I cannot begin to express how freeing and liberating it is not to worry about what others think about you and base your value system on those opinions. So that's top of my list. Number two of what I don't worry about over 50 is getting pregnant, <laughs> which may seem a little funny, but yet it's not when you consider that we spend most of our reproductive years trying not to get pregnant and jumping through hoops to make that happen. Suddenly, when you reach this age and you go through menopause, it is non-existent. So I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry about it. It ain't in the cards and it ain't happening. So that's a wonderful thing not to have to worry about over 50. The next thing is, and this is an important one for women, and that is, for me, my relationship with food and body image has completely changed. I no longer live to eat. I eat to live. And there's a very distinct value system change in that statement. Uh, food doesn't control me. Food is not a weapon to be used against me. It is a source of joy. It is a source of nourishment, a source of energy, and I see it as a vehicle to make this vessel healthier, stronger, well. Um, I see it as preventative. I see it as joyful in taste, texture, and experience. I no longer have, and I never really did, but, but food to me is seen so differently as I've matured. And also, I've invested so much time in understanding food and how it works in the body and knowing what works better than others, knowing um, immune system responses and inflammatory responses to food. So I see it differently now. And I know that lean protein and lots of vegetables and healthy fats and some good fruit, 
all of that serves me so well and I enjoy it. And it's not to say that I don't enjoy a pasta dish or a piece of dessert, of course I do, but I sure as heck am not gonna beat myself up over having a fettuccine Alfredo followed by a cheesecake. And if I feel like I've fallen off the wagon and I don't feel good in my own skin anymore, you know what? I know exactly what I need to do to get back on track. So it's a simple, wonderful, freeing feeling to not be controlled by food and not a perceived image of how my body should look. I um, accept change in my body, it's going to happen. So why on earth should I fight it and be miserable with it? Uh, it's an opportunity for me to do other things. It's an opportunity for me to try different exercise, to try different movements. So again, I look at all of this as an opportunity for something new instead of something that I feel that I'm losing. Number four, sexual hangups. Another wonderful liberating thing that when you reach a certain age, you no longer have this sort of shyness or any reserved feelings about what your desires are and what satisfies you. Um, I can't really say I, I did, I'm just not that type, but I do find as I've gotten older, I've become even more open and expressive in um, wanting and deserving pleasure in a certain way, and I'm not shy to communicate that. And I love that about getting older, and I think that's a common thread. It's something that I hear about and read about quite a bit, that a lot of women, um, you know, it, it no longer feel held back in expressing what it is that brings them pleasure and joy. So sexual hangups out the door. Number five on my list is speaking my mind. You know, I think that our our pores get bigger as we get older and stuff just oozes out. And I mean that literally and figuratively. I just don't feel like I need to zip it like I used to, that I've sort of earned a right to my opinion because it is based on life experience and I'm not about ready to hold it back um, in defense of myself in an argument or a thought process or whatever. Um, it doesn't mean to be crass or rude, Certainly I'm not that way, but I'm also not going to sit on my thoughts and my feelings like I used to in order to possibly maintain the peace or not ruffle any feathers. I think it's very, very important to be transparent, to be authentic. Um, it is a part of our growth and our development and it's something that we desperately need. So yeah, speak in my mind is certainly up there. Number six on my list of things I don't worry about over 50 is seeking praise from my boss. And I see this a lot in younger uh, people who are entering the workforce and they feel sort of miffed and, and um kind of flustered that they're not getting credit or acknowledgement from a superior. And you know, if you've been in the workforce long enough, you know that bosses will come and go and each of them bring different qualities to the table. Some are more open and communicative than others. Some are more um, giving in praise. Some are more giving in criticism. Um, so you can't really base your value and self-worth in the workplace based on what your boss is saying about you or not saying about you. My feeling is if you do your job well, you show up on time, you're respectful, you are always asking for how you can do more, how you can do better, um, constantly looking to reach that next level, then that praise will come from within because you will say and feel that I am giving it my all here and there's nothing greater the thing more than I can do than my effort and my value system is based on my effort. And if you get it from the outside, great. If you don't, that's gotta be okay too. Number seven, my child liking me. <laughs> now this may seem funny, but you parents will appreciate this because when we're newbies parenting, we want everything to be perfect. We wanna be perfect parents and we want perfect children who look cute and act sweet and are smart and do everything right and everything's in this perfect little bubble and how's parenting, it's great. And how's your child? Oh, they're great and everything's wonderful. Yeah, okay, 
I call baloney on that because we know that parenting isn't all great and wonderful all the time. Sure, there are amazing highs in parenting, but there can also be some really painful, gut-wrenching lows. And I am just of the belief that children need, well, obviously they need love and attention, but they desperately need structure and accountability. That they cannot go through life freewheeling it because that's not life. And so I'm a firm believer in setting up boundaries and rules and, and ways to operate. For instance, when I go to my job, I don't just get paid just for being me. I get paid because I have to perform. Well, the same thing in our household. If children want allowance, there are things that they must do. They must make their bed, they must keep their clothes off the floor, they must help with chores when asked without rebuttal. Uh, if they don't do those things, well, they don't get allowance. It's that simple. And so by setting up structure, it will create the best in them, especially long term, but it will also set you up in the interim for some really good heated debates, for instance. My friend Joe doesn't get doesn't have to do anything for his allowance. He just gets it. And my response is, well, yay Joe. You know, Joe gets paid for just being one of God's creatures and Joe has no accountability. So Joe may wind up uh, not being able to hold down a job, not showing up on time and having a messy existence. And you can thank me later that you're not Joe. And so these are the dialogues and debates that take place. And my feeling is, you know, in the moment, if I get pushed back, if I'm not liked, if there's frustration with the, the rules of the house and how it is that we have to live and operate, then so be it. I will gladly deal with that pushback now, knowing I've done the right thing, knowing that my child and children need structure in order to be healthy, happy, and functional human beings. I always say I'm not raising a child, I'm raising an adult. And that's what it is. We want them to function well as adults. So you know what? If I'm not liked in the moment, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Number eight on my list, making and owning up to mistakes. And again, this goes back to the whole perfectionism thing. I remember in my 20s and 30s, oh my gosh, in an argument, I would stand my ground, I would argue it up, down, left, right. I was a lawyer, slicing and dicing because I had to be right, because of course my way was the only way. Well, I've learned that that's not always the truth and that I will make mistakes and I have made mistakes and I will continue to make mistakes. And that's where the beauty of forgiveness lies in others and in yourself. And so the acknowledgement that I'm not going to get it right all the time is step number one. And step number two is forgiving myself for when I don't and being able to offer up an apology for when I've made that mistake and that it's okay and I'm not lesser than because I'm somehow imperfect. I'm a human being and therefore I am imperfect. And I think it's important that we acknowledge that in ourselves and not be afraid to say, I'm sorry when it's warranted. Next is getting older. And this is what I really, really, really want to hone in for you ladies who are hitting benchmark birthdays, not to fear the next decade. I have found that every decade that I've moved forward in, I have loved that much more than the previous one. And what I love about it is the wisdom. I love where I am in the moment. I live in it. I appreciate it. I am grateful for the knowledge and the life experience that I have gleaned over the years to make me a better person in every area of my life. I love the fact that I invest in my internal as well as my external, that I never settle and say, ah, it's, it's going to go. It's all downhill from here. I'm always looking for ways to improve and there's joy in the process. And that's a big part of what I talk about here on this channel when I'm doing hair, makeup tutorials, or even lists like this. It is the investment within. It is putting deposits in this bank account so that you can be full and therefore have more to give to others and to feel satiated yourself. So don't fear getting older. See it as an opportunity to be a better you in every way. And number 10 on my list of the top 10 things that I don't worry about over 50 is worry and fear. Will you please name for me two anytime in your life 
where worry and fear ever served you well. That's what I thought. It never has and it never will. Worry and fear are two useless emotions because they cripple you. They prevent you from moving forward. They lock you in an emotional stalemate where you feel trapped, anxious, and you can't see past this blockade or whatever it is that is in front of you. So my feeling is, and it's not to say that we're going to live a worry-free or a fearless life. These things will come in. But I've always felt that if you do your part, when I do my part, everything that I can in the moment to make the situation better, and then turn over the rest and pray, and realize that it may not be my timing, it may not be all in my hands here, and let it go, and just get that negativity and those awful feelings out, that suddenly the best that was meant for my life comes in. And so I really want to encourage you to move past worry and fear in every element of your life, whether it is reinventing yourself, figuring out what this next step in your life is. Maybe you've been a stay-at-home mom and you want to contribute and do something in, in another area. Take that leap. You want to cut your hair and you're worried about what your husband's going to think or your friends or, or number one, what others think. You know what? Do something for yourself. And if you don't like it, it's hair. It'll grow back. Don't worry. Just try things. Get outside your box. Live a little bit. Um, take some risks and chances. You know, that's where the beauty lies. That's where the excitement is. That's where opportunity is. So push aside those two ugly monsters, kick them out the door, shut it tightly, and say good riddance. All right. What's on your list? Leave it below. This is a beautiful community. We share so much with each other. If you have something or some things that you have moved past in your life, leave them below because I think that our folks here will really appreciate whatever knowledge it is that you have to offer. I so appreciate you. I am grateful for you and grateful for this opportunity to just be able to share because sharing is caring and that's what we do. Go out, be bold, be blessed this week. I'll see you next time. Bye.